Hi, this is Josh and this is a chessvideos.com instructional video. I'd like to present something for beginning players who, when facing a new opening, aren't really what sure, sure what they should do and need some ideas about how to play sort of on the fly in the opening, a situation almost every chess player is in unless they have a whole lot of free time or are professionals. And I think the key when you're trying to think about what to do in the opening is to keep the three main, I guess, opening principles in mind. And that is that first of all, all of your moves need to be judged about whether or not they control the center. These center four squares are the most important squares on the board because any attack will probably go through some of these squares. And the player who controls sort of the crossroads of the chessboard will be able to move his, his or her pieces much more efficiently than his opponent. So in the opening you want to work to control these center squares. The next thing you want to do is to develop your pieces. You know, you want to get your knights and bishops out and eventually your rooks and the queen because the player with more pieces out is going to be able to quickly adapt to the situation, get an attack going, get pressure. So you, you don't want to just leave your pieces at home and move the same piece over and over. That's going to lead to major problems. And the final thing is that you want to protect your king. Now, that's because, obviously, in the center, the king can be very vulnerable because if these pawns disappear or things break open, the king will be trapped and your opponent will get a lot of pressure. So you want to defend your king, and usually that means castling, mainly because when you castle, you know, you, you get the rook in, so you also develop the piece, and the rook will move towards the center. So, so say you're faced, you know, you're playing black, you haven't seen this before, and your, your opponent plays c4. So you think, okay, well, it doesn't really seem, and by the way, this is the, the um, English opening. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't develop pieces, but it does control the center. You know, it controls d5. So uh, it's, it's a wonderful opening, but I'm just trying to show how players should react. So the first thing you need to do is look for a move that, you know, follows the three principles. So, you know, you don't want to play something like a6 or a5, or, I mean, I would think something like knight c6 or knight f6, while playable, from the standpoint of what we're doing now, unless you know the concrete, you know, specific moves, it's not as good as something like e5. And that's because that controls the center, it gets a pawn in the center, you know, attacks the d4 square. It develops the pieces in the sense of it prepares for these pieces. Now the bishop can move out, and the knight can move out, and the queen. And, I mean, you could argue that it indirectly defends the king, because he, he'll be able to castle sooner once these pieces get out. So let's say white plays knight c3, and again, you're not really sure, you know, you haven't played this before, so you need to figure out what to do. Well, you just continue with the three principles we've been talking about. You say defend it, or develop your knight, or, you know, I mean, you could maybe even move your bishop to b4. I mean, there are all sorts of moves you can play against this opening, but I want to try to focus on, you know, moving based on these principles rather than memorizing things. It's always better when you have reasons why you're making moves. So you need to, so if you follow these three principles in the opening, you will rarely be led astray. So you do something like that, and let's say your opponent plays something like g3. Now the idea is that he's going to move his bishop here, but you just need to focus on your own thing, and you can defend the center. So you want to, now you want to move that meets all three principles. So the last thing towards castling, which will protect your king, is moving the bishop. So the question is where to put your bishop. Well, you know, e7 might be good, but it doesn't really do anything in the center. And if you move to your bishop to e6, it'll block this pawn, so that really does not benefit the center. So I think the two squares are c4 or b4, or c5 or b4. And I think b4 is the best move because although it's not attacking a central square directly, it threatens, you know, in some lines you could take this knight and that will weaken white center. So you're, you're putting pressure on white center, which is one of the ways you can control the center. So you've developed a piece and also now you're going to build a castle. So I'm not going to go too much farther in this game, but I just want to stress the ways in which people can apply these three principles of chess to situations when they, you know, they don't really know what to do. Similarly, say your opponent plays something like this. Well, I mean, this is surprising. This is the bird's opening, and, you know, it has its adherence, but I want to stress that, you know, people don't really prepare for this specifically, but if you follow the three principles, you won't, you know, you won't have a problem. I mean, you can't play e5 because he'll just take it, but you can play something like d5, and, you know, now, you know, you just have to guide yourself, you know, you develop your pieces and try to protect your king. You know, here, maybe e6, you know, you're developing, getting ready to castle, you want to castle quickly, if possible, because that, you know, defends the king and develops the rook. 
and also then the rook will control the center. So I just want you to get in the mindset of not trying to memorize moves because your opponents are going to surprise you with things you haven't seen. The key is to just keep these opening principles in mind because they can applied, be applied to any situation. And that is control the center, develop your pieces, and protect your king. And for more videos, feel free to stop by chessvideos.com for more training videos or you can post, your, post and discuss your own.